welcome to Weekends with Whitney. Do you ever feel like life is about to take you just right over the edge? Well, in this morning's show, it does. Right over the edge of a Baton Rouge skyscraper. Find out why dozens of us swallowed our fear and channeled our inner Spider-Man. Plus, meet a man setting the art world on fire by breaking the rules and drawing outside the lines. And as we head into this 4th of July week, we celebrate freedom. From being ourselves to being happy with Dr. Nick. And happy taste buds with crab cake crepes. Chef Damien at La Creole shows us how it's done. But first, kids can sometimes drive you right over the edge. And sometimes it's a good thing. We're on the edge. One America Place in downtown Baton Rouge rises 300 feet in the air. Dozens of people have dropped over the edge intentionally to raise awareness for adoption. These are the children that are in foster care currently that are looking for families. That's a child in need of a family. They don't have a family to call their own. And what great, greater way to say this than to repel off a building in a loud statement. My first TV husband in Baton Rouge, Leo Honeycutt, called to ask if I too would go over the edge. I wasn't the only one he called, but. They said, well, can you call some other people in the media? And so I, I called other people and they were like, wait, go down what? And you were the only person who said yes. Oh, no! <laughs> you, you were the only person. Despite being deathly afraid of heights, I knew the children were worth it. What are, what are friends for? 21 years since I met the guy and he has me jumping off buildings now. <laughs> now let's see, what's next? <laughs> but first things first, and Leo was first. Nice knowing y'all. <laughs> Leo repelled earlier in the day without me. It wasn't intentional. I just got delayed with work. Great job, you're about halfway, Leo. Looking good, looking good. You know, I'm thinking I'm almost close to the bottom, and there's this little sign that says halfway down. <laughs> and I'm going, what? But Leo was impressive. He made it down in just four and a half minutes and never got his rope locked up. It gave me hope. The eagle has landed. <laughs> yeah. So did all of this safety gear and their team of people preparing me. Pressure. Now I'm getting a little nervous. The helmet might give me some courage. Not so much. Uh-oh, I hear thunder. The weather has taken an ugly turn. But they say it's still safe to go. Well, I'd feel safer if someone would repel with me. Oh, Kim, wanna go? He's in. So Leo takes over camera duties on the ground and we head to the rooftop. But up there, ooh, the weather's menacing. Have you ever seen but the experts say it's still safe to go. So we run through all the training and then it's time to go. But uh-oh, they tell us Kim and I can't go down side by side now. They had to pull the other rigging up. Well, I am scared all over again, but Jim assures me I'll be fine. So really, I just force myself to go. Leo's filming below. Bless her heart. I can't believe she's actually doing it. It's a little freaky. Now that's a real woman coming down in the rain. <laughs> oh, I'm going kind of fast. <laughs> Oops. Only four stories down. We need to lock up, so hold on a second. Oh, yeah. The emergency locked a gauge because I was going too fast. So my attempt to get down from here as fast as possible is completely self-defeating. Yeah, just my luck. The girl who's scared of the heights. Fear sets in. All right, one hand's gonna go below that device, the other hand's gonna go on the device. The kind that instantly turned my brain into jello. Oh, this thing? Just like they taught you in training. Oh, I don't I don't remember the orange thing, but I remember the yellow thing. Well, that victory was short-lived. Okay, I won't go so fast next time. Got a little carried away. Try to go slowly and smoothly so that it doesn't lock up. That's it. There we go. That's perfect. All right. Yeah. I haven't seen much perfect today. But I get it all going again, for 15 seconds anyway. Oh, darn it, they'll lock myself up again. Oh, okay, we're locked up again. We're going to get some more orange rope. Oh, I do. Now it's just embarrassing. <laughs> Poor Kim's never going to get a turn. All right. Oh, yeah. OK, Whitney. All right, I'm going to do better this time. 
I still haven't looked down yet, but the mirrored glass isn't leaving much to my imagination. Look, it's taking me so long to get down. The rain stopped. It's hard to get your groove. But those last 30 seconds, I think I found it. Well, almost. Oh boy, then touchdown. I think it took me the longest to get down from anyone. No. I think it did. It took me nine minutes, twice as long as Leo. But I'm down, so Kim's up. I have a feeling how this'll go. She'll probably just whiz on down. She'll be Spider-Man or something. But it's not like that at all. <laughs> she looks like she's being tethered in space. Come on, Twinkle Toes. Oh, I think she's milking it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my conclusion. She looks like her feet are having way too much fun. But then... Okay, Kim, we're hung up. Need you to let go of the blue rope. We're going to feed you some orange rope. <laughs> there you go. All right, now you can keep propelling. She's going now. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Bump. <laughs> oh, really, Kim? That's funny. Just sometime today, Kim. <laughs> Oh man, she's found her sweet spot now. Hey now, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> so I'm trying to bounce. Hey, uh, well, see, I told you she was milking it. Bouncing on purpose. It took her 11 minutes to make it down. Ooh, that's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> but fun work, despite all the obstacles, to raise awareness for foster children. I was on the bottom looking up at you, and I was thinking, Oh my God, it's raining and she's up there. What, you know, I, I thought I had it easy, but you know, I mean like, cause you could, you could slip and slide on those window panes. Yeah, the rope could slip big time. Mm, well, you know. Yeah, and he was photographing it. He wasn't there, Whitney, stop. No, Whoa, stop. it could be dangerous. I'll catch you. What? For you to do that in the rain with the lightning and thunder. <laughs> I know there was lightning right before yeah. that too, right? That's like, okay, it's nice knowing you, Whit. <laughs> Proof, the girl ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you would like information about fostering a child or adopting a foster child, there are a lot of great resources out there. But one of the most comprehensive can be found on the website of the Louisiana Department of Child and Family Services. Still ahead on Weekends with Whitney. Drawing outside the lines, how artist Keith Douglas gives voice to his art and how it's changing the world. Plus, letting your freedom ring this 4th of July with Dr. Nick. And a delicious recipe to wow your holiday guests, crab cake crepes. La Creo's Jeff Damien shows us how to do it right after this. Welcome back to Weekends with Whitney. You're about to meet a man who has taken his passion and given it wings, all with the stroke of a brush. Artist Keith Cartoon Man Douglas has been drawing since he was three. You know, I remember when I first did the paintings I did with crayons on the walls. I went all the way up the stairs and I colored on the walls. I did these little cartoons and stuff like that. 60 years later, he's still drawing. He's drawn more than 200,000 people in Baton Rouge alone. Were your parents artistic? Where did you get it? Uh, I don't know. All I know is I just love to draw, and I've been drawing ever since. I was just like a quiet kid. Barely, any, nobody really knew, heard my voice. 
His pen is still his most powerful voice of all, especially in his political satire cartoons. He's known in that circle as the revolutionary rascal. In his painting circle, he's known for colorful, whimsical portrayals of things like the Spanish town flamingo. But it's people that are his specialty, like the church pew ladies, musicians, the hoagie man, the oyster man, and others. How do you decide what you're gonna paint? Uh, you know what? I just let the emotions get to me. Sometimes I listen to music. Sometimes when the music is on, guess what? Hey, it depends on how it is, the rhythm, and then all of a sudden, boom, that's where it comes. Wow. Hey, it's the image that's in my head. Most of the time, I've taken from a lot of stuff from New Orleans. These characters I create, uh, basically they're from people I've met on the street, in neighborhoods. Keith grew up in New Orleans, spent his first 40 years there. By third grade, he was teaching art classes. At wow. eight years old, I was teaching him how to draw, how to paint, how to do silk screen, how to do t-shirts, all that kind of stuff. At Xavier University, he was majoring in fine art. His dad told him not to. You be a teacher and do your art at the same time. Mm. That's the model I followed all my life. So I teach and I do art on the side. He's been teaching high school art more than 30 years now, most recently at McKinley High. He says there's an inner artist in all of us. Oh, I've shown so many kids how to draw. It's just that the belief system, they, they live in a negative environment to the point that they don't have belief in themselves. Yeah. So my thing is to show your beliefs, show your possibilities up there, transform you into something else. Much the same way he'll transform an old piece of wood into this. I like constructing too, because this is built out of wood. So you build, you fabricate all this? You fabricate all that. Wow. Put paper mache paper on here, a lot of cardboard, and you know, and this is raised right here. Uh -huh. So I just love doing it, and I like to paint. I love abstract, but I like to paint in the abstract way as well as, you know, in a realistic way. Just have a good time with it. That's all, that keeps me interested. And it keeps people interested in his art. Elizabethan art gallery owner Liz Walker calls him a true artist. There's not a lot of artists like Keith that can just walk into a gallery and the gallery owner knows immediately they want to carry their work. Keith is as colorful and engaging as his work. One person said about my work, that, uh, when they see my work, it's like party on a wall. And I say, I'm gonna keep that, that little moniker. You know, it's party on a wall. You enjoying it. You, you know, you, you might look at art and say, hey, that's great. But you know what, you're laughing at the same time, so you got a little extra adage, okay? That's why I do caricatures. I like drawing people, I like seeing people. You can see Keith's work up close and personal at the Elizabethan Gallery right here in Baton Rouge. Or if you're in New Orleans, he's also in an art gallery on Royal Street. Coming up as Weekends with Whitney continues. Letting freedom ring, not just on the 4th of July, but throughout your entire year. Dr. Nick shows us how. And we head into the kitchen at La Creole for a recipe that will wow any of your breakfast or brunch guests. Hi, I'm Mayor Robert Meyer, inviting you to spend the 4th of July weekend in New Roads. Come soak up the fun and sun on beautiful False River. Bring your family to enjoy our traditional boat parade where everything is decked out in red, white, and blue. Take part in Louisiana's largest water balloon battle. Delight your taste buds in our wonderful restaurants or take a stroll and do some shopping. Enjoy music of all kinds. We have something for everyone this 4th of July. Come join us Friday, July 3rd, and Saturday, July 4th. Come have some fun in New Road. Give the gift of fine dining. Wayne Stabler Companies is offering one card for four. La Creole, The Little Village, Stab Steak and Seafood. Four sizzling restaurants, one card. This segment brought to you by our friends at Wayne Stabler Companies. Welcome back to Weekends with Whitney. Well, this Saturday is the 4th of July when we celebrate freedom of so many kinds. Certainly freedom of our country, religious freedom, personal freedoms. Dr. Nick joins us this morning to talk about that and celebrate it. Good to see you this morning. Yeah, yeah, good to see you too, Whitney, and happy 4th of July to everyone. It's a, it's an incredible day that we experience, and 
and it's also a day when I think we need to kind of sit back and challenge ourselves as to what that Constitution means. Mm -hmm. And you know, you you and I were talking about the the real freedom to 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 be ourselves, mm -hmm. the freedom to explore and and choose our own path in life. Which I think is greater than probably it has ever been. Unbelievable freedom. Mm. The, the, the opportunities that are out there in this nation, in this great nation. But I, I would like to just begin, even though I'm a therapist, with, with suggesting that people take time to read the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Wow, a lot of us haven't done that since just, high school. Just <laughs> read, just understand what the Constitution is about and the balance of power of the three of the three uh, powers, the power seats, Congress and Supreme Court and the President. Now you might think, oh, well, Nikki, what does that have to do with freedom? It has a lot to do with understanding how the nation operates mm -hmm. and that we're based on the common good principle, that it's not just the freedom to be yourself at the expense of everybody else, I can't, I can't scream fire in the theater. I don't have that kind of freedom. Right, but I had the freedom to express myself, to talk bad about the government, to talk bad about the president. I, I mean, thank goodness we're in that country, although I and, think some people go too far. <laughs> and, 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 and Whitney, thank you for saying that, because I'd really like to correct it. It's not so much that we need to be talking <laughs> bad about anybody. We need to understand that we are in an ongoing experiment where, over, where, where critique is constant. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that sound exciting? That we need to be able to question policies and question is this the appropriate thing and question where the money is going and question where my time is going in my own freedom. You know, we're really struggling as a nation with infrastructure, with education. You know, we're, we're struggling with, with serious gaps. I don't. That doesn't have to be a partisan issue. Mm, right. I believe we've become it, way too partisan. Oh, we've, and, and, we, and the way uh. we talk to each other. I, I just, I don't want to use the word disgust, but there are times when I just am so sad that in such an incredibly great nation, we talk so accusatory to each other and we use the Facebook and the, and the text in order to do it because oh. it's easier. <laughs> Some people will just go on and on and send these long responses to one simple comment, maybe. I mean, certainly, and this isn't political, but this is, you know, personal freedoms. Um, certainly the Caitlyn Jenner episode. Caitlyn Jenner, perfect example. I just example. stayed out you of that stay out fire of it. because I don't have time to respond to everybody. Half the people will probably agree with me. Half would hate the way I feel. And you know what? I don't have to prove anything to anybody to let my feelings be known about that. I'm not hiding it, but in a place like that, I, I just don't have the time to carry that flag. See, and that's a great example of how you use your freedom mm. for your own personal health and for the health of the nation. See, we, we think of, I don't have time for that. I think the fact that you don't get, get in it is actually helpful to making the nation better. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, we see we we well not I, only wait, not only get in it, but some people get off on getting get in it. Get off on getting into I it. Mean, I think is it a power, Nikki? What is it? Where it, it it I don't I don't want to be simplistic, but I'm gonna be I'm gonna be overly simplistic. It's like get a life. Get a life. Find some goals and services and passions and things to put in your to put yourself into where you're going to leave a mark behind. There's a great phrase that I have sitting on my desk that says, "Every day, Nikki, be sure to laugh, love, and make a difference." Mm -hmm. We don't make a difference when we when our civil discourse is is destructive and accusatory. We don't. But mentally, let me ask you this: What is going on when someone and I'm I, I'm I'm guilty of it? it at times too, um, hopefully not very often, but still I'm guilty of sitting behind the computer and responding to something that you either adamantly disagree with or agree with and just da, 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 da. and then you feel this surge and this, I mean, it's almost powerful, but why do we do that? I can tell, uh, I, I think we do it because we, 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 one of the great, one of the great gifts of freedom is that we have the freedom to be passionate mm -hmm. and we have the freedom to be opinionated. See, that's really great. What I would suggest you'd really try to do, and this goes to the freedom, the, the freedom to restrict ourselves as well. Oh, I have the freedom to say, you know, I'm gonna write it, but I'm not gonna send it. Uh, I'm gonna think about it, because tomorrow it really might be that, why was I even caught up in that? 
right. like the Jenner thing, right. or, why, or why am I so taken up with, with this particular issue? Let me think about that and see if it, it, if it really matters. Sure. You know, and, 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 and again, I just want to, I loved your notion about the freedom to be yourself, so I just wanted to kind of make sure, sure we close out with that. What, what we want parents to be aware of, too, on this day, help children find their path. Help children be free to find their path and not live the path of the parents. Mm, mm. And not live the lives that the parents maybe wanted them to live. Help them find their own drive. We have the freedom in this country to do that. Isn't that exciting? That's so exciting. Isn't that exciting? That's a great way to think of, the, of freedom because there are a lot of parents out there that worry and it's like, let, it, let them find their way. Mm. They will. Give them guidance, supervision, discipline, but help them find what is their natural bliss. We live in a country where we have that freedom to do that. Oh, it's exciting, isn't it? It's so exciting. Instead of beating somebody down oh. with your time, right? Help empower people. Mm -hmm. The, the people, real quick. The, you know, you know when people stop seeing me for therapy. Tell me. When they find a job they like. <laughs> no kidding. I have dropped so many just from career paths because wow. that's a third of our life, and we have oh. the freedom to do that. But what scares us is, well, I don't know, it's, I'm scared, or I won't make as much money. I'm like, but it's your passion. Mm. It's doing what you love will help you set a budget. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Wow. Anyway, it's a great day, the July the 4th, a wonderful Independence Day. It is. So you all have a great Independence Day coming up. We have a whole week to get ready for it and uh, to celebrate it and let there be peace and freedom in your life, that and every day. Much Amen. more Weekends with Whitney right after this. Robert Meyer inviting you to spend the 4th of July weekend in New Roads. Come soak up the fun and sun on beautiful False River. Bring your family to enjoy our traditional boat parade where everything is decked out in red, white, and blue. Take part in Louisiana's largest water balloon battle. Delight your taste buds in our wonderful restaurants or take a stroll and do some shopping. Enjoy music of all kinds. We have something for everyone this 4th of July. Come join us Friday, July 3rd and Saturday, July 4th. Come have some fun in New Road. cakes couldn't get any better. Oh, they do. At brunch at La Creole, we are doing crab cake crepes. And we are joined by Damien and Caleb. We're going to show us how it's done. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, OK, Kim had this out in the restaurant, and it was oohing and on. So she said, you have to show us how it's done. Absolutely. How do we start? All right, so we're just going to take our uh, crab cake mixture. OK. To the middle of the crepe. Be real gentle with crepes are right. Oh, they are. They're difficult to make. To, uh, to seal the crepe, we're just going to get a little egg wash, which is just an egg. Oh, okay. Um, Not just the white, the whole thing. Right, the whole egg, and you just you know just mix it up, and then just put a little bit on there, and it'll help it. It'll help it seal. Oh, it no sure does. Come. Like glue. And there you have your roll of crepes. And there's no and cooking them all, right? Yes, we're, uh, we actually will put them oh. on this. We'll put them on a pan and run them through a 425 degree oven for about two minutes, just enough just to heat just to heat the uh, crab cakes. Okay, so that's delicious. It browned the edges, but didn't burn them. Right, right. So we have our cooked crab cakes, uh, just heating them up in the oven. Um, we actually like the the a little brown on the edges. It gives it a little bit more color. Um, 
we're gonna do next is we're gonna take this sweet and spicy pepper marmalade. Mmm. Who's responsible for making that around here? That is all of us. Oh, okay. <laughs> Boy, he shares the glory because that is so. glorious. Greens. Some garnish on the top. <laughs> I know. And there that you word. have crab cake crepes. You will be so happy if you make them or you let them make them for you. Either way, it is such a delicious dish. Much more weekend with Whitney coming up right after this. Foundation Repair, fixing your foundation problems for more than 30 years while preserving and protecting your trees. Thanks so much for spending part of your Sunday with us here on Weekends with Whitney. Be sure to be here next Sunday as well because we are going to have a special musical treat. From the famous Neville family, Charmaine Neville, she shares her talents and we talk about a lot of things in New Orleans and how it's changed since Katrina and how it hasn't. It'll be a great show, and so will all of the firework displays and shows that we're gonna have around our area. But this morning, we leave you with one of our own, but wishing you a safe and happy 4th of July. Till we'll see you next Sunday morning, July 5th.